Mischief, opens a long time ago, in a pissant Ohio town, where an average horny high school student lives his insignificant life by crashing his dad's car, watching D-cups walk down the street, and getting his rocks off by reading nudist magazines. His life turns around when he meets the new kid in town, Eugene Jean Harbour. Jean is experienced with the ladies and instantly makes it his mission to help Jonathan lose his virginity to his crush Meryl, better to do in their pissant Ohio town. Jean also takes an immediate liking to Bunny Miller, who is currently dating the biggest douchebag in Nelsonville, Ohio, Kenny Brubaker. The new friends attend a fair where the girls will be present. Jonathan sees his crush at a kiss booth, who hasn't really noticed his existence until now. He plays spin the wheel, in hopes to kiss Marilyn, but ends up having to kiss another girl. Jean goes for it as well, since Bunny is there, but the wheel ends up on Marilyn. Jean goes for it and takes his sweet time kissing her, which annoys Jonathan. After cucking him, Jean then takes more money from Jonathan, and goes for another spin on the wheel, but this time it ends up on Bunny. They kiss passionately before Jean tells her he'll be seeing her around. The next day, Jean gives some advice to Jonathan about how to talk with girls and how to present himself. He also criticizes his outfit and tells him to shrink his jeans, so his bulge sticks out, as girls are fascinated by that. During the class, Jean tells Jonathan to drop his pencil so he can take a better look at Marilyn's panties and when he does, the teacher makes him stand up and repeat what was said so far. Unfortunately, the class and the teacher are greeted by his boner when he does. After school, Jean sends Jonathan down the street to talk with Marilyn, but he gets distracted by a sudden noise and crashes his bike into a nearby parked car. Marilyn helps him out as Jonathan grabs her breasts out of nowhere. He apologizes, but Marilyn doesn't seem to mind or care. Jonathan thanks Jean afterwards, since this is his first real breast that he touched, but Jean reassures him that this is nothing and that he will be going all the way. Marilyn suddenly arrives and asks if Jonathan is feeling better. But he soon realizes she is not there for him as she asks Jean out to watch a drive-in movie with her and gives him her number. Jonathan is rightfully upset as he suspects Jean will play foul. Jean swears he won't touch her and that this is good, as they know where Marilyn is and that Jonathan can act. As the night comes and the group gets to the drive-in, Marilyn starts to snuggle towards Jean and tell him how much she likes him, which annoys Jonathan in the backseat. Kenny's friends notice Bunny there and quickly go to inform their friend. Jean and Jonathan go to get some Coca-Cola and root beer for the girls, but they are soon confronted by Kenny and his knucklehead friends. Jean steps up and defends Jonathan, saying he is the one that asked Bunny out. Kenny tells him to meet at another place nearby in 15 minutes. When Jean arrives, Kenny suggests they play a game of centerline chicken, where they both drive head-on with their cars and the first to turn away loses. They both refuse to turn until the last second as the two cars bump into each other. Kenny comes out swinging at Eugene, but everyone starts fleeing when they hear police sirens. Jean's father takes his anger on him, as he wrecked his car and he can't get to work the next day. We gradually learn Jean has issues that go far beyond the local Richie Rich hating on him. Jean shares with Jonathan that his mother has recently passed away and his abusive violinist father had to quit his job with the symphony to move them to Nelsonville. Jean's father beats on Jean out of pain for his loss and to discipline his troubled son. Bunny breaks things off with Kenny, eventually, and decides to start up a relationship with the bad boy in town, Jean. Marilyn sees them in tears. Jonathan visits Jean who starts working as a part-time mechanic to pay for the damage caused to his father's car. Jonathan has given up on Marilyn, but Jean insists he keep trying and make him call her and ask her for a date. Jonathan believes there's no point, but relents and calls her. To his surprise, Marilyn accepts. Jean tells him he has to step up and really go for it. After the date, Jonathan walks Marilyn back to her house and they kiss goodbye. Both Jean and Jonathan start a relationship with their dream girls, with Jonathan and Marilyn not missing an opportunity at every turn to master the art of heavy petting. One afternoon, while Jean and Bunny are bareback riding in a local pasture, Jonathan strenuously tries to get Marilyn out her panties and bareback ride her in the front seat of his dad's car. When they get caught by their friends, the car door accidentally opens, Jonathan rips Marilyn's pantaloons off her body, and the couple creates a very memorable 1980s movie poster. Jonathan and Marilyn quickly get past their embarrassing petting session and decide to take their relationship to the next level when Marilyn's parents leave town for the weekend. Marilyn invites Jonathan to her house one beautiful Saturday afternoon and proceeds to lead him to her bedroom. Marilyn puts on some mood music then turns her innocent teddy bear, so it can't watch the upcoming exploits. The teens begin undressing each other and we learn Mother Nature has blessed Marilyn with a pair of golden globes, worthy of their award-winning ceremony. A naked Marilyn crawls into her bed and convinces Jonathan he needs to remove his underwear before the action can truly begin. This is it. This is the moment Jonathan dreamed of for the last 18 years of his life. Just as the teens begin to explore their bodies, the backwards Jonathan confesses to Marilyn he didn't bring any protection with him. Marilyn tells Jonathan they can play, but they can't go all the way. Jonathan, 
being relentless, convinces his girlfriend to play just the tip. The joyous game person Lassie enters the room to see if Jonathan has fallen down the well. Marilyn gets distracted by the dog, but Jonathan stays focused, doesn't pull out of his mission, and completes his conquest. Marilyn gets upset as Jonathan promised just the tip and the pull out, but went all the way. He also learns she is not a virgin like he thought. Things turn comical when Marilyn's parents unexpectedly return home. Jonathan has to get dressed and flee the scene before he gets caught. He flies out of the bedroom window, but ends up hanging right in front of Marilyn's mother, who also has the fortune of watching Jonathan's pants fall to the ground. Meanwhile, Bunny's parents want her and Kenny to get back together, so they set up a dinner with Kenny at their house, which Jean finds out about, and gets angry with Bunny the next day. Jean is upset, because the only reason Kenny is seen and liked by Bunny's parents is because he comes from a rich family. Kenny and his friends vacation where he works and talk condescendingly to him, as they make him wipe the mirrors and fill his car up. Later, Jean and Jonathan have a dinner at a local drive-in when Kenny suddenly shows up and starts telling Jean that Bunny's parents think he is trash and to stay away from her. Jean's patience runs out and he starts a brawl. When Kenny's friends try to intervene, Jonathan jumps in to help his friend, but quickly gets sent flying and also receives a broken arm. Jean and Kenny continue to fight and trash the whole place, until the restaurant owner comes up with a shotgun to the crowd. While Jonathan congratulates Jean for beating the crap out of Kenny, Eugene's father is enraged by his son's behavior and kicks him out of the house forever. Jean decides to leave Nelsonville. Meanwhile, an injured Jonathan goes to school where he gets bullied by Kenny and his friends. He sits alone when Marilyn comes over and tells him that Jerry Yeager, the quarterback of their football team last year is in town, and asked her out to be his date for the prom. She wants to go with him, but wanted to ask Jonathan first. Jonathan doesn't buy it however, as he remembers they had a lousy football team last year and tells her and Jerry to go F themselves. Time passes as prom night comes, it's alone in a bar when he is suddenly greeted by Jean who came back. The duo go to the prom where Jonathan sees Marilyn dancing with Jerry and Bunny with Kenny. Eugene is quickly told to leave as he is no longer a Nelsonville student. Bunny notices him and chases after him, but misses him outside as he rides off on his bike. Jean shares with Jonathan that he returned to town to ask Bunny to run off with him. Tucky Horse Ranch and peace in his life. As Jean falls asleep, Jonathan rides back on his bike where he meets Bunny outside. He gives her a ride to meet with Jean. The couple then reconciles and decides to leave town together. Jonathan tearfully parts ways for the last time with his friends. Jonathan informs Bunny's family she has left town, then runs into that prick Kenny. Jonathan, who has had enough of Kenny's bullying, goes demolition derby on Kenny's precious car in the middle of it. Kenny tries to run off before his car gets completely trashed, but Jonathan chases him through the streets and ultimately, he bumps Kenny's car into a fire hydrant, completely wrecking it. A triumphant Jonathan returns and sees his friend Rosalie, who has a crush on him, asks her out on a date, then drives off in his beat-up car as the movie draws to a close. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notification bell if you want to watch more videos like this. Thanks and see you again soon.